Hi everyone and welcome back to the Living Well with Schizophrenia channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over what exactly I'm referring to when I say thought broadcasting and going over whether people with schizophrenia can read people's minds or have people read their minds or what's going on with the term thought broadcasting. Hi, my name's Lauren and I make videos about what it's like living with schizoaffective disorder or schizophrenia. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so as not to miss any of the future content that we put out. And also, if you would like to help support the creation of future videos like this one, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Okay, so what is thought broadcasting? It's basically a delusion where you think that people can hear or read your thoughts. For some people, this literally means that they believe that they their thoughts are being broadcasted by the internet, the radio, or television, and that their thoughts are being read out by presenters on these medias. In fact, a study done of radio stations and television stations in 1999 found that it was a really common occurrence for people to show up at these broadcasting stations to ask the broadcasters to stop broadcasting their thoughts. Now, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be that a media source is broadcasting your thoughts. It can be simply that you think that the person you're speaking with is reading your thoughts or that they can inherently know what you are thinking. Thought broadcasting is often one of the symptoms a patient may be experiencing to suggest a diagnosis of schizophrenia. So I want to talk a little bit about what my own personal experiences with thought broadcasting have been like. So thought broadcasting was one of the earliest um, symptoms that I noticed that came about in terms of my development of schizophrenia. Um, it started happening around high school time where I was convinced that people around me could hear my thoughts or they could hear what I was thinking without me having to say anything. Um, you know, looking back and thinking about this critically now, it doesn't make a lot of sense because I know that people can't read minds, but there's just this, this delusion that brews bigger and bigger that, that tells me that it is true that people can hear my thoughts and that they can read my mind. It definitely wasn't something that started out as an intentional thing. It was something that just kind of overwhelmed me in terms of thinking that people could read my thoughts or my mind or whatnot. Um, now I kind of try to um, harness it a little bit and try to sometimes send people messages with my mind if I'm having a lot of intense thought that they can read my mind. No, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but yes, I still do it. So this feeling of thought broadcasting used to happen basically with every interaction I had with somebody or any time I was in a room with other people. It happens a lot less frequently now, um, or maybe I've just gotten more accustomed to ignoring it. I've been asked if I can reality check with thought broadcasting, and the short answer is not really no. I have asked my partner on a few occasions um, if he could hear my thoughts or if he could hear what I was thinking. And you know, he always responds with, no, I can't read your mind. However, this isn't entirely effective because it's a delusion that's kind of greater than, than that, that is telling me that the other person that I'm speaking with doesn't want me to know that they can read my mind. And so, you know, having him tell me, no, I can't read your mind is not the most effective because I have this greater delusion that he doesn't want me to know that he's reading my mind. I also will sometimes try to send the person that I'm communicating with telepathic prompts, like blink twice if you can hear what I'm thinking, or that kind of thing that like I can kind of gauge their response to. But the same problem exists where I'm convinced that they don't want me to know that um, they are reading my mind, and so why would they why would they blink twice to let me know that they could? I also sometimes try to kind of flip the logic and think, well. I can't hear what they're thinking, so why would they be able to hear what I'm thinking? And this, my friends, is the beginning of a rather large rabbit hole I sometimes can spiral down into where I'm convinced that there are larger simulations at play and that there are controlled environments at play around me, and the delusion kind of grows from there. Sometimes I try to think critically about whether or not the person that I'm communicating with actions indicate that they can hear what I'm thinking or that they can hear my thoughts and try to think critically about that and see if they're kind of acting based on the knowledge of my thoughts. However, beyond that, there's not really much that I can really do to reality check when it comes to thought broadcasting. So given all this information, I'm sure you can kind of understand why something like thought broadcasting may be kind of inhibited, inhibited for someone in their daily functioning, and it can be a little bit debilitating in some senses too. So some of the ways that it can be debilitating are just leading to avoiding people because you're not wanting them to hear your thoughts or you're not, you're not wanting to 
um, engage with people because you're worried that they can hear your thoughts. And it's kind of a anxiety inducing thought. You also might not be able to participate fully in conversations because you're very preoccupied with the idea that the person can read your thoughts before you've even said them or anything like that. And so it can be a very distracting thing when you're trying to communicate with someone. Another problem that I personally experience is that I often assume that people that I'm communicating with already know what I'm thinking, and this can be a hindrance to healthy communication. I know this happens a lot, especially with my partner, um, where I just assume that he already knows what I'm thinking because he can read my mind or whatever, this delusion that's kind of always there. And so I don't communicate as um, fully as I, as I could or should, and that leads to breakdowns in communication. It can really begin to interfere with regular functioning and a lot of thoughts or feelings come up around this where you're feeling embarrassed or ashamed because, you know, it's, it's embarrassing to have your internal thoughts broadcasted to the world or broadcasted to the person you're communicating with. So, you know, honestly, I think actually having thought broadcasting as one of my symptoms has kind of made me a better person because generally I'm just more aware of what I'm thinking because I think that the other person can hear me or people around me can hear what I'm thinking. So I try to keep my thoughts very positive in nature. And it's kind of funny because sometimes I will just compliment people in my head because I think that they can hear me and I'm trying to put out positive vibes into the world. So, you know, there are detriments to thought broadcasting in terms of your ability to communicate effectively with other people and to um, engage with people around you. But there are also some not bad benefits. Like it's made me a generally better person, I think. <laughs> so I just want to take a moment to just make it clear that these experiences that I've been speaking about have been my own experiences with thought broadcasting. And I understand that there is a variance in terms of the experience that someone can have with thought broadcasting. And I know that there are also things like thought blocking, where someone can think that someone or some external force is blocking their thought process. Or there is thought insertion where they believe that somebody is inserting thoughts into their head. And so I understand that there's a bit of a spectrum when it comes to thought broadcasting. And I would love to hear about your own experiences with thought broadcasting in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching. If you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna help support the creation of future videos like this one, please check out our Patreon page. If you'd like to watch more videos on this topic, the first time I mentioned it was in my experience with uh, schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. And we also did a video on positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia slash schizoaffective disorder. Thanks so much for watching and wishing you and your loved ones good health as always. Take care, bye.